In the second part of this story, follow Amaka's journey through her university days as she struggles to keep her spiritual powers hidden and find true love at the same time. Amaka was no longer the little girl who had once run barefoot through the village, chasing after chickens and laughing in the sunlight. She was now a beautiful young woman of 19, tall and graceful, with skin the color of deep mahogany. Her hair, thick and dark, was always neatly braided, and her eyes, large and thoughtful, often seemed to be looking beyond the present moment. She had just entered university, a proud achievement for her and her father Toby. Life had not been easy for either of them since her mother's disappearance many years ago, but they had managed to build a life together, filled with love and respect. Amaka often thought about her mother, Chinaza, wondering what she would have said or done if she had lived to see her daughter grow into a woman. Sometimes, Amaka wished she could see her mother again, even if only in a dream. But other times, she accepted that her mother was gone and would never return. Sometimes, strange things happened to Amaka. Ever since she was a child, she had seen things in her dreams that would later happen in real life. At first, she didn't understand what these dreams meant, but as she grew older, her father began to explain things to her. He told her about her mother and how Amaka had inherited some of those same gifts. Amaka had gifts that were not ordinary. She could see things before they happened, disappearing and appearing at will, and sometimes she could even read people's thoughts and intentions. But her father had made it very clear to her don't tell anyone. People won't understand, and you'll scare them. So, Amaka kept these abilities to herself, hidden away like secrets in the deepest corners of her mind. Sometimes she would wake up sweating after having a strange dream. In the dream, a white owl would fly toward her, its glowing eyes locked on hers. The owl would hover just above her, its wings flapping silently in the moonlit sky. Amaka could never move in the dream. She just stood there, staring up at the bird, a heavy feeling in her chest. And then she would wake up, her heart racing, her body covered in sweat. At university, Amaka made a few close friends. One of them was Nadia, her roommate. Nadia was a sweet girl, always smiling, always eager to help. They got along well, sharing stories about their childhoods, and laughing about the silly things that happened in their dormitory. Nadia didn't know about Amaka's spiritual gifts, but she didn't need to. Amaka had become very good at keeping that part of herself hidden. It was during her first year of university that Amaka met Jamal. He was tall and handsome, with a voice so smooth that it made people stop and listen. They met at the library, both reaching for the same book at the same time. Their hands touched and Jamal had laughed, offering to let her take the book. From that moment, they became friends and from there on, it blossomed into her first relationship. Amaka fell deeply in love with Jamal. He made her feel alive in a way she hadn't felt before. But even with him, she kept her true self a secret. How could she explain to him that she could see the future? That she could disappear and reappear when she wanted? Jamal wouldn't understand, and Amaka didn't want to scare him away. But then came the dream. One night, Amaka dreamt that Jamal died in a bus accident. She woke up, her heart pounding, the image of the crash fresh in her mind. She knew it was going to happen. She had seen it too clearly. The next morning, she called Jamal and begged him not to leave his house that day. Please, just stay home she said, her voice shaking. I'll explain everything when I see you tomorrow. But Jamal was confused. What are you talking about, Amaka? He asked. I have class. I can't just stay home. Amaka didn't know how to explain. She couldn't just blurt out that she had seen his death in a dream. So she pleaded with him. But Jamal got angry. This is ridiculous, Amaka, he said. I'm going to class and then he hung up. Later that afternoon, while Amaka was sitting in her lecture hall, 
looking around to find Jamal in class. She saw a message in the class group chat. Jamal was dead. The bus he had taken to class had lost its brakes and crashed into a trailer. There were no survivors. Amaka could not control her tears. She left the lecture hall and ran home, sobbing uncontrollably. Jamal was gone, just like she had seen in her dream, and there was nothing she could have done to stop it. She was heartbroken for months. Every time she thought about him, a wave of sadness washed over her, and the guilt weighed heavy on her chest. After Jamal's death, Amaka was hesitant to get into another relationship. But eventually, time began to heal her wounds, and by her second year, she had met someone new, Joshua. He was kind, patient, and always made her laugh. For the first time in a long time, Amaka felt happy again. But then, it happened again. Amaka dreamt that Joshua had won a prestigious scholarship, and just as she had dreamt, a few weeks later, he received the award. But she kept this secret from him, not wanting to raise any questions about how she had known. A few weeks later, she had another dream. This time, she saw Joshua being poisoned by his best friend, Evans. In the dream, Evans had smiled as Joshua drank from a cup, unaware of the poison inside. Amaka woke up, trembling. She called Joshua immediately and told him to stop associating with Evans. But Joshua just laughed. Evans and I have been friends since childhood, he said. Amaka couldn't explain without revealing her abilities, so she just pleaded with him. Please, Joshua, just trust me. But Joshua didn't listen. He even went further to say she has been acting very strange lately. A few weeks later, Joshua was dead. The doctors said it was poisoning, but no one could prove who had done it. Amaka was both heartbroken and furious. She hated Evans, but the only proof she had that Evans was behind Joshua's death was a dream. How would anyone believe her? Once again, she had seen the future, but she had been powerless to change it. Amaka grieved for months. The pain of losing two people she loved was almost too much to bear. She stopped getting into relationships, telling herself that it was better this way. Bad things happen to the people I love. She whispered to herself over and over. It's better if I stay alone. Many guys approached her asking for a relationship, but she saw right through their corrupt thoughts and evil intentions. So she remained single for a long time. By the time Amaka entered her third year of university, she had built walls around her heart. But then, she met Courage. Courage was kind and gentle, and as they got to know each other, Amaka felt herself softening. But she had learned her lesson. If she was going to be in a relationship again, she needed to be honest about who she really was. One day, as they were sitting together in a cafe, Courage reached for her hand. I really like you, Amaka, he said but there's something different about you. I can't explain. Amaka took a deep breath. I'm not like other girls, she said, smiling softly. There's something you need to know about me. I'm afraid it might scare you. Courage looked at her, curiosity in his eyes. Tell me, he said. And so, Amaka told him everything. About her dreams, about her spiritual gifts, about how she could see the future. She watched Courage's face carefully, hoping he would understand. But as she spoke, she saw fear creep into his eyes. When she finished, there was a long silence. I, I don't know what to say, Courage finally said. I need time to think about this. Amaka nodded, trying to hide her disappointment. She had expected this, but still, it hurt when Courage stopped replying to her messages and slowly disappeared from her life. It was another heartbreak, and once again, Amaka was left alone. In her final year of university, Amaka met someone who would change everything. His name was Grace. He was tall, bright-skinned, and handsome, with a quiet confidence that intrigued Amaka. They met by accident, bumping into each other in the hallway, outside their lecture hall. Who are you? Grace asked, his eyes narrowing as he looked at her. 
The question was deeper than it sounded on a surface level. Amaka smiled. Who are you? She replied. There was something about Grace that puzzled her. She couldn't read him the way she could read other people. His thoughts were like a closed book, hidden from her, and that made her curious. As they got to know each other, Amaka found herself drawn to Grace in a way she hadn't felt before. But it wasn't just his looks or his charm. It was something deeper, something she couldn't explain. One day, after they had become close friends, Grace looked at her and said, I think you're like me. Amaka frowned. What do you mean? Grace hesitated for a moment, then took a deep breath. I'm born of a spirit, he said quietly. And I think you are too. Amaka's heart skipped a beat. It was like hearing a thunderbolt. How did you know? She whispered. I can sense it, Grace said. You're puzzling to me the same way I am to you, or am I not? For the first time, Amaka felt understood. She opened up to Grace, telling him everything, about her gifts, the white owl she dreams about. Grace listened carefully, nodding as she spoke, and Grace in return opened up to her completely. He too has similar gifts, and he too had lost his mother in childhood, just like her. The owl you see in your dreams, Grace said, it's your mother. That's how she visits you. Amaka felt a shiver run down her spine. How do you know that? She asked. Because my mother visits me the same way, Grace replied softly. From that moment, Amaka and Grace were inseparable. They could read each other's thoughts, communicate without words. Grace taught Amaka how to visit people in their dreams and give them warnings they wouldn't believe if told in real life. They visited each other in their dreams often, spending hours together even when they were apart. Amaka had finally found someone who understood her, someone who shared her gifts. And with Grace, she no longer felt the need to hide who she really was. For the first time in her life, Amaka felt truly at peace. What do you think of this amazing story? Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe as it encourages us to keep producing more lovely stories. Thank you.